Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at how to do some environment art for our lighthouse scene. So uh, this is what we're going to be working on today, this shingles. But before we start, I just want to remind you guys, we do these videos, but you can also check all of this information and more by going to any of the like courses that you see right here. Uh, Arash Arif, he's our instructor for environment. He's very, very knowledgeable in Unreal Engine and he has some really cool master classes that you can check out in order to um, build all of these assets. Now, um, if we start looking at this, uh, this are, I, I believe, are called shingles. And as you can see, in the old times, they were maybe like done with wood or something like that. We're going to be doing a couple of them. And I want to explore with you real quickly the different ways in which we can create this shingle right here, this sort of like action. So I'm going to go to a very old game. Well, not super old, but I'm going to go to Kingdom Hearts. 360 by divided by two for weird names that they use are 358 i don't know so this guy's right here this was a really cool game i actually uh played it on the 3ds back in the day and then i watched like the cinematics really really cool story to be honest and the uh, the thing that i really like that i find really interesting about this game is that uh the graphics were really bad look at this really 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 old graphics but even with this very old graphics you still had a really cool game and most of this game happened in this thing, in this city right here. So if you take a look at the textures from the city, you're going to see that most of these textures are tileable textures. So that's the first way in which we could create like, um, like a tileable roof for our scene. This is the way, if you want to go for like super optimized effects, this is probably the best way to do it. Just grab a like tileable texture like this, get the normal maps, get the height maps, the roughness maps, and just have a very basic plane and do it on top. The, the trick, and, and I've seen this trick been used in World of Warcraft as well, the trick that they do is in order to hide the plane, instead of having this thing on just one plane, they add borders, like wood borders or metal beams or something on the, on the edges, so that this thing rests instead of like a, like a little crevice, and that way you don't notice that this is just a plane. Now, we're not gonna do it like this. We're gonna be like utilizing the fact that we can like really exploit the number of polygons inside of uh, Unreal, and we're going to be doing them uh, traditionally. So we're going to go to Maya, and we're going to plan out how many of these shingles we need. And the way I like to like share this with, with you guys is we, we're going to be creating a kit, right? Like a like a like an. <laughs> sorry, I'm getting a little bit uh, stuck right here. We're going to create a very basic number of elements that we need in order to build a lot of variation. So depending on again the production that we have. We might go with a very small number, like two or three, to a very big number, like 10, right? I'm going to go to like a middle number right now, and we're going to say five. So I need to, to think how big these shingles usually are. So if we look here, and we look for roof shingle size, we're probably going to get an average size of how, how big this tent is. And as you can see right here, a, like a, oh, let's see, there should be some sort of like, standard measurement there we go so it's uh five and a quarter inch and then like 23 and a quarter inch i think 23 and a quarter inch is a little bit too much but i'm going to use i, I kind of like this 23 12 that seems like a good so here instead of maya i'm going to say on the scale on the z-axis it's going to be 23 quite big and then on the x-axis it's going to be that looks like a like a good shingle and 23 it, remember this is a centimeter so 23 centimeters probably something like this so again it seems like a, like a good amount so that's going to be my first uh, shingle right here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this guy five times to five shingles so these are the base meshes that we're going to be using to create our shingle you can combine this center build point just have a a like center effect right here and in here, we can already start creating some very basic, like, variations. So that once we go into ZBrush, we're not spending as much time doing the traditional things that we do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bevel the whole thing. I'm going to bevel all of the elements, give them two, two fractions, small segments. Smaller fractions, there we go. Two segments to give a slightly round corner, there we go. And now, I'm actually going to be using my... Um, the new tools here inside of Maya to use a little bit of booleans and just like break break them up a little bit. And again, if we look for roof shingled damage old, 
you're gonna see some some interesting effects especially like this one you're gonna see that the, this things get like cracked and uh it just get like generally like rough thing so i'm gonna grab a cube right here I'm gonna make it a lot bigger oh now rotate this 45 degrees 45 there we go and then i'm gonna freeze the transformation so that the pivot point resets i'm gonna do this thing so as you can see this is a perfect way in which we can just like add some some cuts and stuff. I'm gonna add one cut right there, that one like cut right here, hit one of the corners, I'm gonna add a bigger cut right around there, okay, something like that, another one like thin one right there, less dense one right around there, and do another one. Right there. All of this again, there's a million ways to do this or like a modification instead of uh, all the different towers. We can even go to the vertex right here and just like, push the corner. Now, most of the damage is going to be on the lower portion of the element. This is important because all of the upper parts are usually covered by the shingle uh, on the next part of the thing, right? So we're going to be doing most of the damage, right? I'm going to do another like small one right here. Sorry if my dogs are barking. They're crazy right now because my kid is <laughs> playing on the backyard. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these pieces, I'm going to combine them, I'm going to grab the original shingles, and then select the new piece right here, and I'm going to go to my booleans, the shortcut right here, we're going to say uh, difference A minus B. And as you can see with this, we're cutting away from the original piece. Get very, very, very nice. Now, uh, these things are actually very similar to ZBrush, they're interactive, so if I modify this piece, as you can see right there, we can tweak a couple of things, especially that one, it was getting a very like thin uh, sort of like a um, corner and that's not that's not what once we're happy we can just say delete history and there we go. now if you want to learn a little bit more about all of this as i mentioned before arash has amazing courses here in a library and you can check our whole library for free if you go to skillshare hey guys abraham here i just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to skillshare skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn improve and grow as an artist we have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in skillshare you can check the description down here and skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership with this membership you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares so what are you waiting for check skillshare down here below there we go. so now that we're happy with this base meshes uh we're just going to export but before exporting there's a lot of angles here we can say mesh and triangle we'll make sure that we don't have any angles. say file export selection and we're going to export this in our uh, uh let's go to our assets i believe we have a lighthouse here yeah there we go we're going to call this shingles base and let's open C now, um, I do have a Seabrush 23 in 2023 now, so my interface is going to look a little bit different because I haven't added my new or my traditional custom interface. So just bear with me while, while I set this up very quickly. There we go. So I'm just going to say import over here. We're going to go to our uh, documents, assets, and we're going to go to our um, life. Now, this whiskey thing, if you didn't see yesterday's video, you might want to check it out. We go over glass for realistic renders. Very, very cool. Very, very complex. But, well, not super complex, but it's, uh, it's a little bit more heavy than other things. So there we go. We import our shingles, press letter T, and we go in. I don't need the pure ref right now, so I'm just going to move it out of the, of the way. And let's go to the material. This is one thing that I always tell my students. Never use this red material. It's really, really, really bad. I strongly advise using, I strongly advise against using that one. So. You, you always want to use like the basic one or there are some cost ones every like here and there so i'm scaling those things and i'm gonna go to geometry we're gonna go to dynamesh and we're gonna dynamesh now as you can see when we dynamesh we do lose a little bit of like the very nice detail there we definitely need to increase this like 512 i would say and that's gonna give us a slightly better effect it, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect but it should give us a slightly better effect. now i'm gonna use my trim dynamic you guys know i love trim dynamic and we're still gonna start using trim dynamic to to clean a couple of these borders right here. Uh, usually when we're talking about games, you'd never want to have like perfect, like 90 degree angles on your uh, element. And the reason why we don't want to have that is because it becomes very, very complicated to bake this down into a normal map. So that's why I gave like an initial bevel to the, the shingles here, because I knew that uh, if I were to bake these things or if we're doing uh, bakes, it would be very, very complicated to, um, 
to capture that 90 degree angle. Now, here with my uh, trimming dynamic, I'm just giving a little bit of damage, like a like metal edge work to the, to the borders. I'm going to make them wood. So we're going to talk about the, the wood effect in just a second. So I'm just going to do a quick change right there while keeping this like a very, very nice silhouette. For instance, there, I'm going to try to keep this, like that silhouette, really, really sharp. I really like that sort of like chipped effect. Kind of looks like it's got like a very big hit. If I need to like carve in a little bit there, Dynamesh again. We're going to be like Dynamesh this quite, quite heavily to make sure that we get a, a nice result. Uh, sorry that I'm also not looking at the camera. Got a slightly new, not new, but I changed my setup, my layout here for the setup, and now my tablet's right here, so watching over here. Hopefully the, the audio is good. Check the audio. There we go. Cool. So again, trim dynamic just to like bevel some of these corners and add a little bit more of an organic view. You don't want to add, since we're going to be doing this as a, as a kit, right? Like we're, we're going to be duplicating these things a lot of times in our scene to, to generate like the whole, uh, the whole roof. You don't want to, um, to do something that's very, very obvious. So we don't want to do like specific scratches or specific damages that people are going to know this very, very quickly. Now, another thing that you need to uh, take into account right now is that we have double sides, right? So we are going to be doing this sort of like effect on both sides of our element. Definitely need to take the time to, to add this sort of like detail both sides because this is going to give me an extra side that I can use to, um, to be able to create a really nice interaction on the, on the roof. Now, there is one slight disadvantage with this method that I'm about to show. Right now, since we're using this and we're going to be texturing and baking and everything, we won't have like the ambient occlusion and the dirt bake that we normally get when it's a single object, hero asset. Now, um, for an, an asset like this, it's going to be really far up in the, in the sky, like close to the top part of the building. Players are not really going to be interacting with it as much. It, it, I don't think it matters as much. Like, it, it's fine. The, the shadow, like the normal ambient occlusion that we get from the engines and from the, from the uh, render things, uh, that should be more than enough. And again, with a good texture, it, it shouldn't be that much. of a There is a way to create like multiple UV maps so we can have one UV map that holds the texture and another map that holds uh, the ambient occlusion. It's a little bit more of a complex process and, and it's not very efficient. So again, for an asset such as this one, I would, I would probably argue against, uh, against doing that sort of thing. I'm going to use clay build up there to again kind of carve a little bit on the on the chip effect on the thing right there. I think some of these are a little bit too chipped. One thing that I'm seeing that we might be missing is a, a cleaner one so that we can have some clean like uh, um, shingles uh, mixed with uh, this like very damaged ones. I might do with. So oh, we're probably just going to duplicate one of this in here or something. And make sure that we give uh, attention to the, the back part as well. Very, very important. Because that means that we're going to be able to have 10 different variations of this uh, shingle, not only five. This is also the part where I mentioned that um, I know here on YouTube it's not, uh, it's not as interesting to, to watch me. Like add little details everywhere. Why I try to move a little bit faster to keep you guys. Interested. But it, it is very important that you guys understand that when we're doing this in production, like it takes time. Like something like this would probably take like an hour, an hour to like get the. Detail. I'm gonna go with Damien Stander first, and Damien Stander is gonna be like my first sort of like, like layer of detail that I'm gonna add. So I'm gonna add some, some big, big, big lines right there on the, on the details. Definitely need a little bit more geometry. I'm actually going to say Control D a couple of times, go above the like the million polygons, and allow me to generate lines wood grain going. Yeah. But if we want to be like super super precise, one of the things that we can do, and we've talked about this before, is we can use Substance Sampler, for instance, to generate some really nice uh, normal map. That would I would say another another. A lot of this can also be done with texturing, uh, but I, I like to have this sort of like information on my high poly so that, that in texturing we have more, more to that way. Now here's a trick that we can use. We can use the clay buildup. And I'm gonna do like just like stripes right here. As you can see, they give this sort of like wood grain effect. 
And then what I'm going to do, I'm going very, very softly. I don't want to do them super strong. Very, very softly here. The wood grain. Same thing. The other side. So, and then we're going to come back with trim dynamic and we're going to erase some of this like line from the shingle. Give us a. Now we're going to be using nanite. So I'm going to be showing you a, a very cool trick to get really cool details without having to do like manual retopology or anything. That's why we're spending enough time here on the on the high poly to make sure it looks nice. So so a little bit smooth, just like remove some of that. Make sure that it doesn't look as just just a clay buildup everywhere. And here's where again alphas come into play. So I I do think I have an alpha that I used not so long ago. I have it here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. But if not, we can. Get something online. If we look for wood alpha texture. Get something that looks nice. Now, be very careful when we're looking for alphas. You want to make sure that the alphas that you're looking for are not just like black and white images, like this one right here. This is not an actual alpha. I mean, it is an alpha, but it's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a a height map, something closer to this, that can give us a a nicer result. So, something like this. I was expecting something a little bit rougher. I'm gonna look for wood. Texture. Let's see if we can find something that looks. Good. Look for wood texture bar. There's some really really interesting like this one right here. Oh my god! If we can extract this one, I think that's gonna be great. I'm gonna show it to you. I've, I've shown this before, so if you're watching this, then I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna save this on my um the word on the desktop, and we're gonna go to Substance Sampler. Substance 3D Sampler. We don't have a course for this one in particular, but if you want to learn a little bit more about how procedurally generated textures are, are created, you might want to check our Substance Designer course where we cover some of them. So I'm going to go here and load the image right here, open. I'm going to do image to material using AI. And uh, yeah, the, like, the software is just going to like literally process this thing. It's going to create a sort of like tileable material. It might not be perfectly tileable. It's going to be a, a uh, material that's going to be extracting the information from this image right here and it's going to give me some look at that very very cool effect i'm going to go to the options here on the tiling i'm going to bring this back to, to one and look at that as you can see we get some very very cool details there that we can use as an alpha channel so i'm going to go to export or to share and export this as and in the material settings we want to export a jpeg and as you can see i have this selected to only export a height information i'm going to hit export and say and let's open the file what we I'm going to bring it to the desktop again, and if we go back to ZBrush, right here, we can go to our standard brush, go to Drag Rec, go to our alphas, import that. It's a super, Substance Sampler has been my go-to software to generate these images. There are other softwares you can use, like XNormal, and uh, uh, there's a Crazy Bump, and there's a couple of other ones that are really good, but look at that. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Just crazy, like, the amount of detail that we can get. I'm definitely going to bring the intensity down a little bit. I do want to have a little bit of that detail, but not too much. There we go. Now, it's very important that we try to, to vary the, the scale a little bit so that not all of the shingles look exactly the same. And look how by combining my original silhouette with this new effect, even on the on the backside right there, we're getting some, some really nice. Effect. So that that's pretty much it. The last thing that I might want to do is just when my clay build up, I want to add like a couple of extra damage here on some of the cuts, make it like the cuts going a little bit deeper than what it might seem. And I'm not too worried about like having a clean shingle because we can just like rotate them around and, and it's going to give us a nice result. So this is it. Like this is the, the high poly of our shingles. Now let's go to texturing. Uh, the way we're going to be doing this is again, we're going to be using nanite. So eventually we want to export a relatively high poly version of this, but we don't have to go all like high. I'm going to delete lower right here and I'm going to duplicate. So actually I'm just going to export. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm going to clone this, and on one of the clones, I'm going to say C plugin, decimation master, and we're going to decimate this to 100. Okay. 
Uh, as you guys know, what Decimation Master does, if this is the first time you've heard about it, don't worry, it's just a thing that reduces the amount of polygons that we have, and it gives us a, a version that's a little bit easier to use when doing bakes, 3D printing, and all of those. We could technically export all of this into Nanite, and, um, and there's not going to be any issues. But again, you don't want to abuse the tool. So if you can like optimize things a little bit, then it's usually a good idea. So this right here are my, these are going to be like my actual high poly. We can even, again, go a little bit lower. And given the fact that these guys are not like flex, definitely, definitely bring this lower. I'm actually going to bring them lower. I'm going to bring them all the way to 35. So we're going to go from here to 35. There we go. So you can see that's a lot better. Yes, we do have a little bit of fragmentation, but it's like from afar, it still reads like a really, really cool, um, really cool. Uh, now I'm seeing a couple of errors here, like some things. I use some dynamic to delete that from a couple of them so that we don't see the exact same kill everywhere. Here, just a little bit of train dynamic to randomly clean up some of them. So this right here is a really, really good low slash high poly that we're going to be using. This is the actual thing that we're going to so once I have this, I am going to get some uh, UVs, but we're going to get this UVs inside of Maya. So you have. We're going to go polysurface one, and we're going to export this, of course, to our uh, assets. Call this lighthouse, and these are going to be yeah. uh, this is gonna be shingles, base mesh, Hi. Okay. And now I'm actually going to press Control c to go a little bit higher, like 250k, which Add. So we can conserve a little bit more detail. There we go. And we're going to export this. We're going to call this shingles base mesh high. Yes. There. So we're going to go now to. Uh, we don't need sampler anymore. We're going to go back to Maya. So we're going to delete this guy. So we're going to file import. We're going to import the shingles we have right here that are going to be the ones that. Will need a UV. That's the thing about that's the thing about nanite. Like if you want to use nanite, you want a texture. You still need to have UVs. You still need to like uh like find a way to transfer the color information to this guy. Now the cool thing about nanite or the cool thing about like this for high poly meshes is that UVs don't need to be clean. So I'm just gonna go face. I'm gonna select well, first. I'm gonna select all of the objects. I'm just gonna say UV. I'm gonna do a camera base mapping. So it's a very basic map right there. And then I'm going to grab all of the lower faces right here. I'm not going towards the middle. I'm going to say UV. I'm going to do a planar mapping from the Z axis or from the uh, Y axis. So it takes like a picture from below. And it, as you can see, it creates a seam line all around the element. Look at that. We have a seam line that's dividing the front and the back of our shingle. Now, of course, we need to go to your UV editor and we need to unfold this. I'm going to control U, unfold, and control L, lay them out. And that's it. Is the UV that we want? Does it look weird? Does it look like effed up? Yeah, it does. Like if you were to show this to a a person that's working with the traditional production pipelines where everything needs to be super clean and super like like uh, optimized and stuff, they will be like screaming, like what the hell is that? But for us, it's working perfectly. I'm just gonna export them again as our shingle right there, and uh, we can now go into Substance. So we're gonna go into Substance three D paint. Oh. Now I'm not gonna be able to combine this into like the final. Um, like the, the asset yet, but I'm gonna do a quick render inside of Marmor set to show you how this will look. So we're gonna say file, new. We're gonna select, of course, our assets here. We're gonna go to our uh, lighthouse. I know I'm moving really fast, my friends. And again, if you wanna learn a little bit more about this over here. All of this courses right here in the description, you can find the, the Udemy link, the ArtStation link, the Skillshare link. So all of this information is laid down for you in a way, way more low way in our, in our projects. And uh, if you want to support the channel, that's the best. Also, make sure to join our Discord channel. Down. So we're going to go here, single base mesh, shingles base mesh high. We're going to hit open. Uh, I think a 2K map is more than enough. We don't need anything else. And we're just going to say, OK, direct access. There we go. So that's our, our shingles right here. You can see a lot of geometry, right? A lot of texture. We're going to go to the baker. We're going to bake this at 2K. And we're going to select the shingles base mesh. That's are going to have a little bit more uh, results or a little bit more information, as you can see. That's more than enough. There's a little bit of overlap happening here on the cage. The one thing we can do is we can actually reduce the amount of the cage a little bit. And as long as we don't see any red things, something like that should give us a cleaner. And I'm just going to say bake select. So the normal map information, the ambient occlusion information, curvature, all of the information we bake down right here 
so we can get all of the necessary maps to get very very cool. again remember you guys have a lot of geometry a lot, a lot of geometry still that doesn't mean that we can't use them because we can i'm gonna look for wood and i'm gonna be using this um wood uh walnut if you look at our pure ref file you can see it's like sort of like gray dry wood so maybe maybe even like this wood rough thing a bit better we're gonna add the wood rough and look at that it already looks really really cool the problem is the color and uh, here's what i'm gonna do like we can change the color right here you can go for like a sort of like dark purple color getting a little bit closer saturated gray something like that actually that's but i was going to show you another way in which now see this very ugly line right there super ugly right like one that very bad so how can we fix that remember that every single texture that we have here inside of substance has a way in which we can change we can change the way in which this texture is applied onto the object so in this particular case we're going to change the projection to triplanar um as you can see this is looking better but now we need to change the rotation as well 90 degrees that it's going in the direction of the chain. And now, as you can see, we're not going to have that. Perspective. It's going to be a lot like more blurry, and it should allow us to have a slightly like, better. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, let's just add some very basic uh, layers here. I'm not going to make it super like, like intense, as, as I've mentioned before. It's, um, it's, just, it's just relatively simple asset, so, so we don't want to like overdo it. I'm going to add a rust layer, black mask, I'm gonna add a generator. The dirt generator, and I'm gonna set this to over a little bit more, more dark. Overall. Play a little bit there with the density. Uh, yeah, that looks good. And then I'm gonna add a new layer. It's gonna be well, we're gonna start with this one, like white layer. I'm gonna add the black mask and uh, black mask a generator, and we're gonna add a metal edge. So the metal edge, where as we know, will like remove some elements, it's gonna make it look like chip. I'm gonna use my trick here, the, the one that I've shown before. Use a fill layer and something like a clouds layer to increase the contrast here, play a little bit the balance, and multiply this so that we can control how like varied or not we get. This one I like to set it to linear dodge, and I like to lower it a little bit. So that. One thing we could do though is we can push the height information down. For instance, now we're gonna be like going into the wood a little bit, so. Uh, can give us a, a little bit of an extra bump there on um, on the normal. This one right here, I'm gonna make it a little bit dark. To be honest, I don't wanna I don't want it to like rust. That looks good already, but let's let's make this a little bit better, right? So again, if we take a look at the reference, uh, like here on the shingles, you're gonna see that there's a lot of like grime and uh, it's kind of like a like a dry moss sort of thing. So I don't remember if we have a moss. Need to moss, but that's not a material, that's like a gel. That's not bad, actually. It's actually looking quite nice. So I like that one. I'm gonna use that one. I'm just gonna add a black mask. I'm gonna add a fill layer again. The fill layer, I'm gonna look for a noise. Like this. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. This dirt four. There we go. That looks really, really nice. And we can play with the balance as well. A little bit of the contrast. Yeah, there we go. Now, if I want to, I can even add a paint layer and I can use my brushes here like this. There's spots to have right there to remove some of these effects from certain areas or add some of these effects in other fiber moss. Another one that I really like dirt. Oh, right, because there's nothing to, to show right there. Okay. Let's check on the other side as well. And it's a little bit difficult on the other side of the shingles. Play a little bit of this here. That looks really, really nice. We can try something like, again, like an overlay, for instance, how the colors get together. No, your dodge. No, nah, really normal is quite fine. I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to add a rust layer. I look a little bit weird. I'm gonna add this underneath, but I'm gonna change the color to like a very nice, like, like yellow, -ish. kind of like that. Then I'm gonna add a black mask. I'm also gonna add a few layer, and we can go for another sort of like. You can see we have a lot of dirt layers or dirt filters that we can use. They're gonna give cracked noise.
Ooh, like that one. That one looks really good. Microscopic. There we go. There we go. Now what we can do is we can style this a little bit more. A little bit of contrast. Ah, look. look interesting. That look, kind of looks like moss. It's a little bit. <laughs> let's change it. Let's, let's do something. Let's just do black and white spots. I'm gonna pray all high contrast right here. Keep it a little bit lower. And this one I am gonna set to overlay so that the color is a little bit darker and we don't get like something super. I'm gonna go over here and I'm still gonna like reduce a little bit of the amount that we have here on the element. I do wanna have a little bit of this not too much though. So I wanna I don't want them to look like super super cold. I'm gonna press the letter C to go into channel mode. That way I can see the color channel and I can focus on generating this. Like grungy texture over the whole, the whole yeah so that's pretty much it so now i'm just gonna save file uh let's save this file of course lighthouse let's call this shingles and i'm gonna export so gonna file textures so again lighthouse place i'm gonna add the folder i'm gonna call this shingles. that's where we're gonna export. what kind of format are we gonna be using of course, we're going to be using our Unreal Engine 4 format, even though we're doing the project in Unreal 5, because they have not updated it. I'm going to change this to a Targa, I like using Targas, and we're just going to hit X. And by doing this, um, as you can see right here, all of our textures are ready. So now, if we go back here to Maya, one of the things that we can do is I'm going to say Mesh, Separate, select each one of them, uh, center the pivot point, and we can start building our room. So I'm going to grab all of this right here, Start creating like very basic single, and then I'm gonna duplicate this once, and we can start like switching them around a little bit. They're not all exactly the same. And rotate here's where where snap or discrete rotate is really good because you can very easily like rotate things even if they're like slightly slapping each other. That one, that one as well. Start building something that looks. Uh, eventually, we're going to have to do this again for our uh, lighthouse, but I just want to show you a quick uh, view of how, how cool we can make this cool. Thing. So, as you can see, again, we can use like the top part of the shingles if we want to. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to control D, trace transformation, just move this back, push this up a little bit, and I'm going to kind of like create like an intersection so that we have like one on one side, the other one on the other side. Then it's just a matter of moving a couple of these guys to different uh, position. You can grab a couple of them, for instance, rotate them the Y axis. They're facing backward. We can even grab do the same thing for some of these guys right here. Okay, they very, very easy. And then, again, yeah, we can just grab all of these guys. Push them, this transformation. Push them back. There we go. Again, to give this a little bit of variation and move and kind of overall a little bit. And again, grab a uh, randomly grab this guy's piece of the y axis, flip it around. If you start seeing some repetition on the other side, flip this side right there, that's gonna start like breaking the whole. I'm gonna grab this whole thing right here, I'm gonna combine it into a single object. It's gonna be really, really heavy. Well, not super heavy, but it's quite, quite heavy. Something like that. Then we want to like, replicate this right here. I'm gonna duplicate this guy, and we have a super, super huge. Maybe push this one up. And uh, for instance, there I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore the, the order that we had. So the shingles right here are actually covering like a double shingle. Look at how nice the holes. Let's follow our. We're following. Might as well. Might as well. So now, as you can see, we've successfully created a huge, huge wall or a huge roof that, when you see it from afar, like looks really, really cool. One more thing that we can do here: we will need to separate each individual piece before we do this, but we can like. Like move them a little bit on the on different axes. I'll probably do this once we do the actual roof here. Because right now one of the things that I'm seeing is like the border right here is very uniform. 
And for this kind of things, I would expect some of them to be a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Just change in, in general direction. Yes, you can see a little bit of the tiling. Like I can, I can definitely tell some of the elements. You could try rotating this around as well. That's going to definitely change things. But as you can see also, the, the direction is not working. So I'm going to grab all of these things. I'm going to say File, Export Collection. And I'm going to call this Angles Demo. And we're going to go to Marmot. Now, as you can see, those are 2 million points, okay? 2.23 million points. And that's uh, quite a bit of shingles right there. But again, it, it, it's not that much of an issue. It's not going to be an issue for, for Nanite. And it's not going to be an issue for us during uh, Marmoset either. Marmoset's a really, really strong software. They'll have a Marmoset course. Sorry for all the commercials. It's just, it's just like right in the moment. So there we go. Uh, we're going to go here to the shingles. And that's it. So now we only need to connect the tech te textures and do a very cool here. The connection is fairly simple. Go to our material. We got our base color right there on the Elvido. That beautiful. And then we're going to use our normal information on the normal map. Breaks up the surface. And we got the occlusion roughness metallic. So this is going to be the roughness G channel. We need to open occlusion map right here that's the occlusion map on the red channel and technically we don't have any metallic and that's it doesn't look like much right now here's where the magic of rendering and uh and the, and the magic of knowing where to to connect and, and modify things really comes into play so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go to the sky for my library i'm going to go for a library that has some sort of like suns ichi rock and what i'm going to do is i'm going to Click on the little sun right there to generate a light. Then that light, the skylight, can increase the intensity of this skylight a little bit and rotate the sun so we get this sort of like glancing angle. There we go. I'm going to change the distance a little bit here on the light as well. It's going to make the light a little bit softer. There we go. I'm going to give it a very, very, very cool effect. Um, and then usually, I mean, like for this particular one, I think this is more than enough. But I am going to go to the sky and I'm actually going to bring the brightness down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own sun right here, my own light. There we go. Change the color temperature now. Very, very warm. Right. I'm going to change this to a directional light so it's a little bit more like the sun. Directional lights are a little bit stronger in that. Change the diameter as well. Maybe this skylight will go my way. Yeah, that looks I'm going to add a secondary light. So I, I'm imagining that the lighthouse is maybe on. We're going to have a light from the up here. Uh, it's probably going to be a very warm light as well. So I'm going to bring the information temperature down as well. I think it's bright. Size is increased. Def the light is down. I kind of want to hide a little bit more. I'm trying to find the perfect example or the perfect like point. Sorry for my dogs. They're definitely let's go for a light a light blue right now so that we can get a a more entry. And one of the cool things is if we turn on ray tracing. Ooh. Really good, especially the shadows. Look at how nice the shadow looks. Uh, thanks to Rachel. I'm really tempted to modify this. You, uh, pro guides. This right here, I'm actually going to change up back. I have like there. Very, very cool. Now, Thing that we can do later in the game is we can add some decals, like some transparent decals here, like bird poop or just like a rust layers or something, to, to mask out this tileable thing that we're doing here with, the, with the shingle. As you can see, this looks really cool. I'm gonna go to the main camera here, and I'm just gonna do some like quick uh, presentation tricks to make this pop even more. One of those is of course focus, so we can turn on depth of field, ray trace depth of field, and we can select distance. Of the field, find 
right around there. And we can bring down a little bit so we blur this out and blur that guy. What else can we do? We can probably impact, uh, like increase the exposure a little bit. Right there. Play a little bit with the highlights. All of these things, by the way, all of this like post effects that, that I'm doing here is something that we can also do instead of real. Post effects. So, yeah. Uh, sharpen is really important. Uh, game engines, normal maps, and everything tend to, to blur things out. So, I always like to add a little bit of sharpness to the, the object. Uh, bloom, I don't think we need bloom. But I do want to add a little bit of net here. Give more emphasis to the main part of it. And that's it. Do you like it, guys? What do you think? 40 minutes, I think? Yeah, 40 minutes of, uh, of content here for you. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is a really good result. So I'm sure, and if we had a little bit more variation, we just missed that, but if we had a little bit more variation where, where the shingles are going a little bit lower, higher, a little bit more rotation here and there, that's going to make this super, super. So yeah, that's pretty much for this one, guys. If you want to support the channel, please leave a like, share, subscribe. Only 30% of you guys are subscribed. To we have like 70% of people who are not subscribed, but watch the content. So yeah, if you want to help us, it really, really helps to get subscribed. We push our numbers up and uh, the YouTube algorithm. Quite a bit. So join our Discord, leave us a like, share, subscribe, get any of our premium courses. And uh, that's it for now. I'll see you back next one, guys. Thank you very much.